They are among the most secret military units within the United States Armed Forces, a classified special operations commando group with a brutally simple strategy. Destroy the enemy and remain undetected. For over 55 years, U.S. Navy SEALs have earned a fearsome reputation for their aggressiveness in war. Theirs is a tradition of single-minded dedication to victory. SEALs specialize in sea, air, and land intelligence gathering missions, requiring a strict emotional and mental control unimaginable to most people. And therein might lie their biggest challenge, finding men who can tap into the physical and mental strength required of a Navy SEAL. Their training course is called BUDS, or Basic Underwater Demolition SEAL Training. BUDS is a 27-week selection course designed to find the men with an ability to ignore pain and a willingness to sacrifice for the team. Every tradition at BUDS revolves around winning. Losing is unacceptable and is punished severely. Each week is designed to be more difficult than the last. Students must compete on a daily basis to remain in the class. Those who quit must ring a ship's bell three times in front of the entire class. Their helmets are placed in a line as a daily reminder that 70% of the men who begin BUDS never finish. Of all the weeks in BUDS, one in particular stands out. I'm talking to you, Francis. Yeah, it's just a count. Its sole purpose is to separate the weak from the strong in a ritual every SEAL must endure and no SEAL ever wants to repeat. We're going to go back out there. I was more than fair. I know you're on a California beach there, boy, but you're in the wrong program. To survive it, a man quickly learns there is only one rule to remember. It pays to be a winner. It begins on or before midnight on a Sunday evening. At the SEALs Training Center in Coronado, California, the third week of BUDS is called Hell Week. Although SEALs tend to minimize its significance to their overall training, Hell Week is an initiation for those who can make it through and the end of the road for those who can't. Welcome to Hell Week, gentlemen. Welcome to Hell Week. The first evolution of Hell Week is called Breakout. It is the beginning of five straight days and nights of mental and physical tension designed to simulate combat stress. SEAL instructors move through the class of 42 men, spraying the students with cold water and tiring them with physical exercise and contradictory commands. The urgent pace is calculated to confuse and intimidate them. Hell Week represents a separation from everything these young men have ever known, where individuals fail and only teams survive. In the darkness, the class is ordered back to barracks to change into dry uniforms. In the urgency to obey, one student becomes separated from his swim buddy, and a group of instructors pounce on him punishing him for not being a team player. Swim buddy! Better not happen anymore this week, gentlemen. Yeah. Stick with your swim buddy. It's a safety violation. Yeah. Moments later, the other students return, and the deliberate pressure continues. They are sprayed with more cold water, and the physical exercise resumes, but with a higher intensity. The class will be ordered to return to their barracks two more times to change uniforms until every piece of clothing they have is wet. Breakout is less than 25 minutes old. On your feet! On your feet! Push up, ready? Being sprayed with water is merely a nuisance. The gunfire is loud but not life-threatening. Even the instructor's yelling is nothing new. Yet after less than 35 minutes in the darkness, the students are becoming disorganized. 
At night, distances seem greater. Sounds are magnified. The class is cold and disoriented. They are unaware that instructors have quietly removed two students from one of the boat crews. As the instructors request a roll call, they watch to see how long it will take for the class to discover the students are missing. Even after five weeks of training, the noise and intensity of Hell Week's breakout have shocked the class into forgetting the most basic procedures. What are you going to do when you're in combat and you you're get a muster and you're two guys short? You said you had a full muster, huh? That means you just left two people out in the field. You're confused. You forgot everything that we have taught you. We're going to make you remember. Hit the surf. The importance of maintaining group unity in one form or another will be repeated endlessly in the week to come. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! I don't want to hear nothing out there! I do not want to hear you sing! Being cold and wet makes minutes seem like hours. Lying in water so cold it shocks a man's breath away, surf torture at night can drive a person insane with misery and make him question his commitment to becoming a SEAL. With people that don't understand what we're trying to do, they have to be on the side that we've been. They have to be able to go out and understand what we need as a community who conduct warfare the way we do. We can't have uh, a man wanting to quit out there. We, we can't have that luxury. Hell Week is a structured world of sacrifice designed to force students to the limits of their endurance. You better do some soul searching. Five days and nights may not seem a long time until it is spent minute by minute under the harsh gaze of SEAL instructors searching for a lack of commitment. The ocean has no mercy, neither does Hell Week. Nellis. Who yeah. See you on Friday, right? Who yeah. Yeah. Well, and you're not cold, are you? No, sir. Uh, don't lie to me. You tell me that you're cold. Are you cold? L a little, sir. OK. Well, just relax. You're all right. You got Diggle, relax. We up. How you doing, Mike? Excellent, Mr. Lieutenant uh, Captain. We're not going to change Must nothing. Must not be doing too good. You don't know who I am. Yes, you're going back out in the water. we got six days left. Don't forget those nights, either. Yeah. Every man's ability to endure cold must be unquestioned. After a close examination for hypothermia, the class will return to the water after a five-minute break. Hell Week is now an hour and 25 minutes old. Every hour of Hell Week is divided into evolutions designed to discourage individuals and reward teamwork. Using a carefully planned, deliberate strategy, three rotating shifts of SEAL instructors will work the class 24 hours a day, each moment seemingly harder than the last. Although many people viewing Hell Week for the first time might see these methods as random harassment. This week is a scripted blueprint of planned chaos. Cruz, you got a ding on you already. <laughs> the Hell Week game, it's a selection course within the selection course. Hell Week is its own entity. Guys can be doing good through training, but yet may not make Hell Week. Hell Week is like a black cloud, I always tell the students. You ask them, is that black cloud coming your way? They say, oh yeah, but it comes their way and it's gonna come down and rain on them. It's motivation. It's working together as a team. It's not going to be one guy making that boat crew go. It's going to be the whole team. What are you Stand doing? by Get down. Get out. over here. Get over here. Stand by down log, down log. Start up log, up log. You always have to be motivated. You always have to think positive. There's going to be some times that you're going to be asked to do something and you might not like Mr. it. Bert, you don't want to lose this race. In Hell Week, winning is rewarded. Losing is defined as falling behind the power curve and is punished harshly. This boat crew has just lost their log relay race. To motivate them, instructors assign them to lift Old Misery, a tree trunk over four times the size and weight of the regular log. This motivation is called the two Ps. Either you play or you pay. Get the log up! Every student believes he will meet the challenges of Hell Week. But no man is ever prepared for the sheer sacrifice required. Each monotonous, grueling challenge can break the student who cannot filter out pain. Get it up! 
Oh, you're Get it off your head, boy. Down. Up. Down. Up. I don't want to hear no whining and moaning and groaning, Joe. Oh, Get it up. Get it up. Get it up. Get it up. Pathetic, Jets. Newell, you better start putting out, boy. No outside cameras have ever filmed Hell Week before. The teams are concerned that a portrayal of their commando training without proper context would either be negative or sensationalized. Their anxiety is more than simple suspicion of the outside world. Secrecy is rule one for the teams. Their best defense is remaining undetected, in the field or in the press. Nonetheless, despite some restrictions on filming, what is portrayed here accurately represents the challenges and stress these students will experience for the next six days. You guys have six more days, count them. Six more days to do this, day in, day out, night in, day, it doesn't matter. You guys are not gonna be finished until we tell you. We have to create a stressful conditions for these guys. And because this admin environment, we've got to create it through uh, pain, inflicting a certain amount of pain and cold into their bodies to help us decide whether this individual is of the caliber of what we need in the teams. Hell Week is now over 16 and a half hours old. The adrenaline and excitement of breakout have given way to the realization of unyielding misery. Yet as tired as they feel, each boat crew must work as a team or pay the price. Every task is simple, but difficult for six physically exhausted men, unless they work together. Get over to full misery. Get over there. Hurry up. Get over there. There is only one rule. It pays to be a winner. Get comfortable. Make sure you share those things. Yeah. See the cape box? Use them as pillows. Lay down. Relax. You guys don't have to sit up like that. Grab those things. Lay down. Nothing better than guys are put out around here. They get treated right. Okay, guys get good and comfortable. Go ahead and relax. Lay right down. You don't need to be on your elbow. Tell you what, it's not going to last long. You got advantage of it. You guys did good. Right. Hell Week is designed to push every student past his breaking point, to destroy every conscious reason he might have for not quitting. In the end, the only reason to remain will be a man's commitment to his teammates. I said one, get that log up, full. Get up, get up. Two, three. Three, three. Get up, three, up. three, get up, get up, get up. Four. Every step of Bud's training, including Hell Week, has been tried and tested by the SEALs who teach it. Its harshness is dictated by the job itself. The teamwork required in a platoon demands it. Their profession requires a dedication to training at a level of intensity far beyond the common experience. Apparently, you're waving that red flag saying, hey, I need some extracurricular activity. You guys, come look at us because we want to perform. But we don't want to perform with the rest of the class. We want to perform as individuals because that's what we are. Boat crew six. Six individuals that are not going to be around here as a whole in another six days. What we do is push a guy physically and mentally, just crank down on him, push him right, really, to his limit so he can see what it is. One. You're there, close your One. eyes. You're not paying attention. One. You don't even know what's going on. One. And then we back off and he recovers. And we do it again. You're off someplace else, One trying to find Obi-Wan Kenobi, One. and it's not going to work. And again. Folks, I know you. And again and again. I'm talking to you the last five weeks. One you don't belong here, folks. You're going to get somebody hurt. One and a half. See what I mean? You're not listening. Until he becomes hard and able to take on the most merciless of all operational environments. What are you doing? Keep that low. see, in the dark of night somewhere. I told you. 
Not only is somebody going to get hurt, it's going to be me. And I'm not going to appreciate that. Uncle Sam is it. Naval Special Warfare Center is it, because I'm very, very valuable. You're just a commodity, Oaks. You're here today, gone tomorrow. Make it easy right now. Flip off to the side. They're pulling your weight either way. Go ring the bell and get out of here. Why put up with this stuff? I want three and three quarters, not three and a half. Hell Week relentlessly pounds body and mind until every nerve is raw, every emotion exposed. It is the SEAL instructor's job to discover how each man will react under pressure. Said that you are a safety hazard. Do you understand me? And I expect you to be out of here like that. Do you understand me? Because you're a safety hazard, sir. You need to go to a ship and be a supply officer, someplace safe where you don't hurt nobody. Oh. Get over to Warren Officer Weeworth right now and tell them you're a safety yeah. hazard. Somebody. No! Somebody. Now, get over there! Four. Line two, two. One. next six, five, two. I don't want to deal with you. What do you want, Mr. Miller? Instructor, one. Come, instruct one. me to come over and tell you that I am a safety two. hazard. Three. That you're a safety hazard? Four. Here we go. Two. What have you been doing? One, two, two. Explain to me. I tripped while one. doing a standard arm carry. Two. You tripped or an extended Three. arm carry. Who ya? Yeah. Why? Four. Are you tired? One. Are you two. more fatigued than anybody else out Three. here? One. No. Four. Did you trip all the way to Chow and back too? That's why you couldn't carry your boat too? Two. No, I did not. So what's Three. your problem? Flying. What's your problem? Six. Stop lying, Mr. Newell. Three. What's your problem, Mr. Newell? Three. Why don't you want to be here? One. What's your, I've got authority right now to do something to you that you don't want to happen. You need to put out, Mr. Newell. This is your, this is your awakening right here. Here we are. We're back. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now, who do you think in this group has a button on button? Who would you say has a button on button? After two hours of lifting logs, the exhausted class is totally in the moment. Seconds seem like hours. Minutes seem like days. They fail to realize they are being rested because resting doesn't mean relaxing. With the cold superiority of a master interrogator, one instructor scolds them for their lack of attention to detail by challenging their personal commitment to each other. War is not fair, neither is Hell Week. That's okay, because you're going to find out sooner or later that individuals do not survive on their own, and you're going to bite the big one. Straighten your back. I'm standing right here in front of you, and you're going to try to embarrass me. Not straighten your back, but I'm asking you to do it. Why? Because, again, you do not want to be here. You do not belong here. You know that. I know that. Why don't you just go over there, kick back, and relax? If you want me to have everyone lay on their backs, close their eyes, so you can sneak off gracefully, I can do that, too. I just want to help. I want to be your friend right now. That's the way it works. I give you a nickel, you give me a dime. Do you understand what I'm saying? You guys, go ahead and push them out. Hey! Training is a sacred trust, and if you don't look at it that way, then you should not be in a training environment. You should not be teaching anybody anything. Okay, I did say recover, Mr. Newell. That's a Bravo Zulu. But the other two guys, younger men, Rodriguez, did not recover when I said so. So you guys, drop on down again. <laughs> Finally, Mr. Newell did something right. He told you guys to recover, because I said recover, not recover, decover, but recover. He was paying attention. You guys weren't. Shame on you. Now, let's go ahead and crank out 10. I'm only asking 10. One of all 11, one above 9. 10 good ones, and I will recover you. Ready? Ready? Ready. Young. One. Young. Two. Two. Stop what you're doing. Come on, gentlemen. I said 10 good ones. One below 11, one above 9. 10 good ones, one zero. I ask, you just give me 10, not 20, not 30, not 40, just 10 good ones. And you started off on the first three, it was not very presentable. But, Keown, now if you don't want to get with the program, you don't want to be part of the team, that's fine. Step over to the vehicle, we'll take care of you. If you guys want to try again, 10, 1, 0, 10 good ones. Make them good as a unit, as a team, as a group. I will recover you. Begin. Ready! Ready! Go! One! Now, out of the whole group, recover. I got stamatoy. Is that how I pronounce that, sir? Excellent job. 
out of six people, that officer in the back did 10 good push-ups. The rest of you guys did halfway hook push-ups. I didn't appreciate that, but because he did 110%, he pulled you guys through, and I gave you that, so good job, Mr. Stamatory. That's the way it should be each and every time. That's the way it should be, 110%. You guys remember that, it'll make it a lot easier. In combat, uncertainty or disorder can result in death. This boat crew is about to learn that confusion in Hell Week, like confusion in battle, will only bring pain. Now! Who's the next senior man here? James Youngerman. Youngerman, you sure about that? Who ya? I see two other ensigns in your group, and you're telling me that you're the next senior man. What's wrong with this picture? Who ya? Ensign. It's wrong, you guys. Right? Drop on down. You got confused. Next man took control. A little bit undue stress, and you froze. What's going to happen when you're out in the field? Number one man, senior man, take a slug in his head. He falls down. Next man has to take control. Bingo, you freeze. That means you take a slug in your head. Not only that, but the rest of your squad is probably dead. Push him out. I want 10. I say 1-0. One, one below 11. One above 9. One zero. Good. Good. Very good. And I mean very, very good push-ups. And I will recover you guys. Begin. Ready? Ready. Down. One. We compare Hell Week to a combat situation. And what we're looking at is the fatigue and stress on the individual to make sure that he can perform under those stressful situations. But in reality, when the bullets do fly, a lot of things happen. The main thing is the individual just doesn't sit there, the individual reacts. Because every tenth of a second could mean your life or your partner's life. Carter, you don't want to be here. Carter, come back here. Jump in the back of the truck. Hell Week is the ultimate mind game, a shortcut to finding those men who have the determination to overcome any obstacle and withstand any adversity, and who will not tolerate failure in themselves or others. Pay attention, your buddy's falling asleep, wake him up. You know, I think that a lot of people come through here and they think, well, you know, this training is fun, this is gonna be great, uh, we're gonna get out in the sand and the surf and, and have a great time. The thing that we try to emphasize here is don't lose sight of the big picture, and the big picture is, is that this is a combat unit. Get it off! Noel, you too, boy. You're starting to piss me off. You should be out of here a long time ago. Get it up, Noel. You're not going to have everybody pull your law like all the time, every minute of today. Get it off! I hated Hell Week, just like everyone else hated Hell Week, but uh, the thought of quitting never crossed my mind. It's an attitude process more than it is anything physical. Down. Oh. Up. Get it up. Get this boat up. Get it up. Get it off your head in front. When you find a mental weakness, of course, you exploit it, see how far you can go. And if you can get rid of him, then you're accomplishing your mission because you don't want him next to you in a combat situation. You well, I mean up, boy. When I say up, I mean up now. Not when it's convenient for you. Down. Up. Get it up. Get it up. Up means off your head, boy. On the line to say, hey. Down. Up. And I know I'm right from wrong. If you can't hack it, if this is too tough for you, then get out. I mean, how do you ask somebody, what was it like exactly in a car accident? It's indescribable. The same thing with, like, a Hell Week Evolution. It's just something that a man has to go to, he has to do, he has to endure, and he has to come out of it with a positive mental attitude and ready to go. Some people don't like to be cold. Some people want to give up too soon. Whereas, in order to pass this program, you have to show that no matter what comes up, I'm going to do the level required. That means if it matters getting cold, it doesn't really matter. If there's water in my face mask, it doesn't matter. If I lose a fin, it doesn't matter. You just keep going. You know, a lot of people aren't used to that. So if a person's not motivated and he doesn't want to be a part of the best, it's a volunteer program, three rings and a bell, and they're out. There is a feeling in the teams for those who belong and those who don't. A man's peers must trust his commitment to the group. If a platoon questions an individual's performance, he will be replaced. In Hell Week, ultimately the instructors determine who stays and who leaves. Their conclusions are based on one question. Would I go to war with this individual?
as an instructor here, you have a responsibility to every member of the SEAL teams to uphold the standards that we feel as Naval Special Warfare Operators are the ones to take to war. It's very important to each and every one of us that we adhere to those standards. The instructor caster has to take the angle that we possibly may be working with these individuals down the line. Early on the morning of the second day, six tired boat crews practice landing their 150-pound rubber rafts on the jagged rocks in the surf line. In worse surf conditions, cracked ribs, sprained ankles, even torn knee ligaments are common injuries. The darkness has had an unsettling effect on the class. The one thing more miserable than being cold and wet is being cold and wet in the dark. Different geographical areas where we go, it's cold. And by cold, it's 32 degrees cold. You had ice before you get in the water, you take the shovel out and beat the ice down. So the environment you work at is, is difficult. It's not for everybody. Hey, Soltis, you got all these guys standing around. What are you walking for? Drop down, both of you. Surviving in war is the basic instinct of every soldier. At critical moments, men must overcome conditions and misery they could never before have imagined. To endure such conditions and still destroy the enemy is the commitment each SEAL demands from his teammates. Recover and go. It's like Tuesday. You're tired, you're cold, you're wet, you're hungry constantly. Sand is rubbing skin off you all over the place on the inside of your legs, the back of your knees, the front of your thighs, your armpits, back of your neck. It makes or breaks you. We gave these guys a simple evolution of go ahead and make an archway with instructors so they can enter the sand pit area. With the problem with their sleep deprivation, all their emotions are so strung out that they get real depressed easy. They can't work together. The guy in charge gets really emotional. You know, they just can't can't work it, so we have to just keep on them. You don't know why you should be punished for the benefit of the class. Are you being punished, Cyril? Yes, I am, Mr. Kill him. So you don't think what I'm doing should be justified? I just know, I, I don't know. Well, and I, 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 I. So you're, you're questioning me for what I'm doing to you right now? No, Mr. Kill No, I, I believe you are. Hurry up, Mr. Randall, 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 you're not in your own program. Do you understand me, Sorello? Who are you on, Sir Kim? And I believe you think that you're in your own program. I don't believe that, Sir Kim. Are you questioning me? No, Sir Kim. Are you questioning me, boy? I just want you to realize I don't have an answer. Shut up! That's fine. I don't want to hear you. Do you understand me? Unless I ask you a question. Do you understand me? Who are Sir Kim? That's right. You didn't make the time on me. You're going back. One minute to hit the surf. I'm tired of doing that. I came through training in 1975. The emphasis was on negative reinforcement always. I think, though, that over the years we've found that uh, we can get a lot more out of a student by using positive motivation. Now, that's not to say that the, the negative hammer went. And I won't ask any questions. Do you understand me? Yeah, sir, Cam. No one's holding you back. Do you want to go ring the bell right now? i will never ring Don't the bell, Don't you ever Cam. question me. Because next time you question me, it's going to be a lot harder than this. Do you understand me? Oh, yeah, sir, Count. Get out of here. Where are you going? We are seeing better results with our methods. We're training smarter than uh, we used to. And I think that we're putting out a better product than what they did 10 or 15 years ago. Now, what am I supposed to think? A guy stands in front of me. You're honest, you're sincere, and bingo, you turn around and you try to stab me in the back. Not only me, but your classmates, so you're an individual. You proved it time and time again. And I'm looking at you right now, and you're getting tired because you're flipping little, little shovelfuls there. Not like you're supposed to, so these guys, again, they're picking up your slack. That's okay, they'll do it while you're sitting there. I'm trying to help you, I'm trying to motivate you. That's going out the window, too. How many times are you going to fall? Don't you wash your face. Sand off your face. Wash your face. Yeah. You got sand all over your hair and your face. So Hit it. Go get the sand off At the evening you shift change on the second day, the class waits for a doctor to inspect them for signs of sickness or injury. 
This is the moment most feared by instructors who worry that the lull will allow the students time to think about their situation. All those of you that have a tattoo, hit the surf! The instructors maintain the pressure by sending the students into the water. But the class has stabilized itself, and privately, the instructors are pleased that no one quits. Good to go. Tell instructor you're good to go. Yeah, sir. Good night. How you doing? I'm outstanding, sir. How are you? I'm doing fine. Partly because of outside complaints, partly for increased effectiveness, the SEALs have modernized their training methods considerably over the last 15 years, using the latest techniques of sports medicine. Men are no longer automatically washed out of buds because of injuries. Often they are given a chance to heal before resuming class. But even during medical inspections, there is no escape from learning the unyielding lessons of attention to detail in unconventional war. Despite the many different changes made in Hell Week training over the years, even during medical inspections, the hell remains. Attention to detail! This little piece of lettuce in a real-life situation could give you away! It is important! It may just be a piece of trash right now, but when it comes to the real thing, when you're eating your MRE and you decide, well, I don't need that salt, I'll just leave it here, and you leave, what is that going to say to somebody? Hey, somebody's been here now, because you cannot do a simple task, line up facing the surf. Do it, sir. Hurry up. Move. Hurry up. I don't want that. Face the surf. Face the surf. You keep that in your hand, and you bring that back to me later. Fuck off. For having them rise to a certain challenge. We just do that with mental obstacles, we do it with physical obstacles. If they rise to it, they become SEALs. If they don't, they find another profession. What are you doing? Launch! amazing how far the human body can push itself when it wants to. And that's what Hell Week is all about. Sleep deprivation for a week, we keep them sandy, we keep them muddy, we keep them cold. It's hard. During that period of time, the student is going to know what his limits are. The biggest hurdle is himself. There's not one person here who has been pushed as far as we're going to take them. The daily battle is with themselves. They, that's the biggest hurdle that they have. Early morning on the third day begins with whistle drills. The ever-present megaphone drones its monotonous message as the class concentrates on the whistle. One whistle, hit the deck. Two whistles, crawl. Three whistles, stand up. Without realizing it, they have begun to ignore the distractions and listen only for the commands. I am right, gents. I'm just trying to help you out. Remember that. I am just trying to help you out. Where is the whistle? Where is the whistle? Where is the whistle? Where is the whistle? People need to start paying attention, need to start working together as a unit. In combat, fear can be paralyzing. Men can die from panic, indecision, or carelessness. SEALs believe the man who gives up on a beach in San Diego will give up when you need him most. Those who quit are no different physically than those who make it. The only difference is attitude. Pass the slugs in front of you. We get people that have done you know, triathlons, have done uh, Ironman competitions, and some of them make training and some of them don't. It's hard to judge the guy that's going to make it. If you're not doing this 100% right, somebody's going to get hurt. It's not going to be you. It's going to be a swim buddy, because normally that's the way that it works. The people who screw up, that don't want to pay attention, the people who are not part of the unit, part of the group, part of the class, are the ones that survive each and every time. If somebody else that takes your head because of your stupidity... When a candidate is past his threshold and now he's hurting, now that's the time that he's questioning whether he wants to be here or not. He's questioning, do I have to endure this day after day after day? We want to see if that individual can suck it up and perform when we're on his buns, you know, wanting him to put out. Phillips, get up front here. Phillips, don't touch your straps. Get up front here. I want to check it out. Turn around. Look at that. You thought we are trying to pull fast one of you guys. We're just trying to be fair. You guys screwed up. Everybody dropped down. Everybody dropped down. 
That is 105% wrong. I told you about that extra 5%. You're going to get somebody killed, Look at that. Look at that. I don't blame you. Twist Not only that, but look at this strap. There's another one there. What happened there? What happened there? So, what? you'll be an individual, too. The people in your boat crew want you to be an individual because you do not want to be a team player. You got not only one thing, but two things wrong, and that's why they're dropped down right now, and they are waiting on you, Phillips. You don't want to be part of the unit, part of the group, part of the team. That's just the way it goes. And Phillips, they're going to pay the penalty for you. Now, as soon as you're ready, you go ahead and take your time, Phillips, because I want you to be 105%. You're not already there, but we'll just give you the extra five. You drop down. You push them out as a unit, as a group, as a boat crew, sir, and I will think about I will think about recovering you if you do it right. Ready? And it really is difficult when you're cold. When you have an opportunity to walk over there to the shower to, to get under a blanket or to quit, and you know, you know, two hours from now you'll be warming in bed, it's, you know, during Hell Week, it's easy to say, I quit. You know, we don't quit in this business. Stop what you're doing. I got a man back there, back there on the port side by the stern that didn't do one. He was sitting there laying on his chest. I don't know who that is, but I don't care because you guys are going to start over for him. Hey, get your arms down there. Seals believe that when a man is pushed far enough, he will either quit or retreat into the inner safety of his mind, where he can function oblivious to the pain in his body. If he cannot divorce himself from the pain and separate mind from body, he cannot survive hell week. Here's what's going to happen. When I say go, sir, you guys are going to recover. When I say go, you're going to recover. You're going to get your boat ready, and you're going to be ready to go in 40 seconds. 4 zero, one below, 41, one above, 39, go. I'm telling you guys, you need to start working together. You need to start getting this down pat because you're only three and a half days into this program, and you got a long, long ways to go. You're not the only ones who have done this. There's a lot of people up on the firm right now doing the very same thing you have. There's only one difference. They finished. You didn't. That's what it get around here when you pay to be a winner. That's the kind of treatment and the teamwork that we like to see for people successfully making through this part of training. So you guys just look at that and envy those guys as you go on about your evolution. It's about faith. Go ahead. I want you to reflect on why you are here in Elwick. The two last boat crews on the left here stand fast. The other guys head into the chow hall, set your watch. A mile and a quarter way. distance from the beach to the chow hall has seemed like a forced march. The class has lost track of time. All the students are hungry and tired, and they struggle to remain alert. Where are you going? You're going to go to the chow hall with your K-pop on? Two crews who are not able to keep up with the rest of the class while marching to lunch get an ultimatum. For these men, the reality of being dropped from training is a far more effective motivation than any physical punishment. If you don't put out, when you transit to and from this chow hall, I will performance drop every one of you here. And don't think for a moment that I can't, because I've already performed a strap and officer. He's gone. Out of training. You are this close to being next in line. Now, you've gone through three days of this hell week to get dropped because you can't keep up walking to the chow hall. Your parents or your families are going to ask you, well, what happened? Well, I couldn't keep up walking to the chow hall, so I got dropped. Do you understand? Yeah. yeah. Uh, no one is allowed to talk during meal times. Students struggle not to fall asleep as they eat one of four meals they receive each 24-hour period. On average, each man eats approximately four to 6,000 calories a day to maintain energy. Food is their only comfort in the absence of warmth and sleep. But sitting down brings on swelling of the joints and stiffening muscles. Moving after eating is yet another painful challenge for tired men. Say goodbye to your only friend. Wave goodbye to the sun. Wave goodbye to the sun. Unhook your right arm. Unhook your right arm. Get that thing up there. There goes the sun. 
It's a pretty sunset. Forward, march, keep waving. As night falls on the third day of Hell Week, 26 men remain. The instructors will not let up. Night is the prime time to test a man's commitment to becoming a SEAL. On the early morning of the fourth day, the boat crews are performing an evolution called Lion's Loop. Each man is linked to the man in front by his legs, which are wrapped around the other man's waist. Like a water bug propelling itself through the water, each boat crew swims parallel to the shore, landing at their assigned target and scaling a seawall while an instructor observes. Push him up. Stay on my shoulder. Okay, next slide, guy up. Show horses, go. Let's go. Let's go. The students can sense that the physical pace of Hell Week has diminished. The instructors know that physical punishment no longer will have any effect on the class. After four days and nights of cold water, psychological torment, and agonizing exercise, the class has become numb to the misery. At this stage of Hell Week, they are operating on instinct. Come on, we need help with Mark. Somebody grab him. Somebody grab him and help him. Hey, guys. Good job, sir. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six. What do you got? Pick Mark, sir. Four. Although they have slowed the pace, the instructors have not relaxed their demands for attention to detail. What crew is this? Three. 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 What about him? We kick ass. You got, a full, you got a full muster? What are you guys doing? Three. Who's in control here? Yeah. What's the problem? Yeah. What's your name? It's a brown. Well, are you in control of this group? Yeah. Doesn't look like it. What do we we'll got? Muster. We'll muster. We'll muster. And? We'll muster. But each boat crew is now operating as a team. What else? And the instructors see the class is working report? together. How do you report? Booker. Some like it hot, some like it cold. No, no. Booker three, man. Booker ready. three, standing by, man, and ready to proceed. They have learned the lessons of Hell Week. For the remaining two days and nights, the instructors will simply keep the class cold and moving. Ahead lie 13 more strenuous weeks of water training and diving instruction, followed by nine intense weeks of land warfare. After graduation, each man spends six months to a year on probationary status inside an operational SEAL team, where other SEALs screen him for temperament and commitment. There is only one rule to remember. It pays to be a winner. Talk to me, Francis. How do I know that you're not going to talk again over there? Because you told me not to, so I to kill. I told you not to a long time ago, but you're still doing it. I'm talking to you, Francis. Yeah, I start to count. Do I have to pour sand back in the mouth? No, I start to count.